already started. Woo! Great morning, you guys. Fired up. It's officially the first Monday of November. We got less than 60 days left in the month. We chose to change up our setting today, right? I see a lot of like shows that have different backgrounds and different settings to be on location, right? So I was like, why not change it up and come out to the balcony? It's a beautiful day out here in Miami. It's like 85 degrees. Loving it. So what we're going to be talking about today is we're going to learn from one of the guys who's not only talks about it, but who has done it. Gary Vaynerchuk is going to be talking some of the tips that helped him not only come from, you know, not doing well in school to becoming an entrepreneur, up with his family business, to then branching out into a brand new business uh, inside of marketing online. And he's going to really share some great tips. And I really love some of the points he shared on this. So grab your notebook, get ready. We're going to get some live shares at the end. Without further ado, let's get into Gary Vaynerchuk's tips for success. Because I believe it. You know, it's really hard. You're in an argument and the, your friend tells you, that's great, Gary, but both my parents were alcoholics. And that really f***ed me up. Right now you're on the defense. That's a good first punch by them. I'm like, cool, we don't need to use me. If anybody has ever been successful okay. that had two alcoholic parents, which, by the way, I know of three, that's well then, weird. now what's your excuse, Karen? We are just so interested in blaming everybody else and excuses because we don't want to take on responsibility. And somewhere a long time ago, I went completely, I only take, I, do you know I think everything is my fault? Like, all of it? Like, I think it's weirdly cloudy outside right now and not nice out, my fault. <laughs> like, his scar, my fault. Like, I just default into my fault. And everybody tries to do everything else the other way. And let me tell you how good life becomes when you take on responsibility. It gets real good. Uh, some of you, and there's a lot of you that follow me, you know why I keep bringing up the last scene of Eight Mile, the Eminem movie? How many people have seen that movie? Great. The last scene, they go into the battle, he makes fun of himself the whole time because it leaves the other person with nothing. The leverage is in being accountable of everything. The leverage is exposing your weaknesses. I proudly talk about passing on Uber twice, being a DNF student. You know, I proudly talk about my shortcomings, right? I can't wait for more bad things to happen. I mean it, because I will talk about them because what, you're so perfect? Fuck you. Rule number two, be practical. We are in a remarkable time. For all the things you may be worried about, left, right, up, down, there has never been a better time to be alive in the human race than right now. Medicine, life expectancy, poverty, every issue we have, better. You know, the best people to talk about what's going on in America are 90 year olds, they shit on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, shit, it's bad, ah, f- my, I, this woman made me laugh so hard. This like 92 year old woman stopped me in the street, she's like, keep doing what you're doing. I'm like, Thank, I mean, she looked like 190. <laughs> I was like, thank you, I gotta talk to her for a second. She's like, and by the way, these women, and she's wrong, but it was still funny. She goes, these women, if I didn't have somebody grab my ass every day in the office, I was pissed. I was like, I get it. I was like, I, was like, I get it. I was like, don't say that in public. She's like, public. I was like, man, 92 is some gangster shit. I'm obsessed with practicality. I'm obsessed with practicality. People think I'm a disruptor or, <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, no like predictor or right. I'm practical. Facebook and Instagram ads are grossly underpriced. If you go home tonight and Google how to run Instagram story ads and learn how to do that and then make a video or picture and run Instagram story ads for whatever you're trying to do in life, become the mayor here, sell some peanuts, kombucha, get people to sign up for your, you know, track team, I don't care what. I don't know where the f*** this sh- comes from. <laughs> I don't even think you can sign people up for a track team. Anyway, nonetheless. <laughs> An Instagram story ad will work better than anything else you can do if you care about people 15 to 55. 15 to 45. If you care about people 30 to 75, Facebook works better than anything. Like, all your dreams, whatever that may be, Simple dreams like making $400 more a month so you can save it and take your family to Walt Disney this year. All your dreams. Like, 
The amount of people that are affected by making $200 more a month is staggering. The fact that I know that if you literally stopped listening to me right now, took out your phone, went to Craigslist, went to the for sale section, clicked on the free section within the for sale section, took your car, got up, left in the middle of my keynote, and picked up eight things, went home, took one picture on your phone, not like in the old days where the phone, you take the discount and put in your computer. No, not that, which is, oh, by the way, the old days, you know, 11 years ago. And no, just take a picture of the thing and post it on Facebook Marketplace and post it for $20 to $80 that literally in the next 48 hours you would have $200 more. I'm obsessed with practicality. Everything I talk about feels so real, it just might take 11 years. And a lot of people don't have 11 years. They don't have 11 years because they're not willing to put in the work to be happy for the rest of their life. They'd rather complain. They'd rather blame somebody else. Rule number three, love the game. Who is Carl Icahn? And why did Time Magazine call him the master of... What are the qualities that you think make for a true and a successful entrepreneur? What's important? Uh, She or he has to love the game. For me, a purebred entrepreneur, she or he loves the journey, Mm -hmm. not the stuff. You know, one of the things I struggle with in the current state of entrepreneurship is a lot of people want the vacations, the watches, you know, even even the context of this, you guys have such incredible imagery. I think it's remarkable. Who doesn't want fine things in life? Yeah. But I think that if you're in the game just for the fine things in life, for the bottles and the models and the private planes, I think you're gonna lose. And it definitely is not my definition of an entrepreneur. My definition of an entrepreneur is somebody who can't live without doing their thing and trying to create, literally suffocated. Rule number four, find your why. People quit all the time because they're doing it for the money. I think the bigger question is, what do you want the money for? Is it blocking an insecurity? Is it to get the girl? Is it is it is because you're trying to amass as much as you can because you don't actually don't like working and you want to live? A, the reason so many people say fail in life and business is their model is let me get the money so that I can enjoy and relax. They think of it as like hoarding it and then eating it all over time. So like retirement and all this. It's such a bad way to. Th- because then you're feeling the pressure of like massing so that you can then enjoy. I think the bigger question is like, what are you up to? Like, why are you doing it? Like, what's up? I just think a lot of people are trying to achieve success and and use fame or money as makeup for uh, a situation that they're just not happy about. Like, you have to figure out how to make your day in and day out happy. Rule number five, surround yourself with positivity. I get it, so honestly, honestly, and I respect that, listen to me, life is long, you're in a spot right now, but my mom didn't have her mom or dad at 14, life is long, it sucks right now, it, when you're 14 it feels like it's your life forever, it's not your life forever bro, you understand, surround yourself with as much positivity to get you through this chapter. Dude, that's- It's early. I, I know it's forever. I can't take it. I get it, but you have to understand there's no alternative. There's only two choices here. You stay under that roof and eat for four more years, three more years, two more years, or you bounce now. Plenty of people bounce to 14. It's not common in the UK, but people do it. Or you don't. Life's about a very simple option. You either do it or don't. If you're gonna eat under that roof, you need to put your your pods in and listen to positivity 24-7 to get you through that shit. Do you understand? When your surroundings are shit, your insides gotta be positive. The fact that you're even here means you're halfway home. I wish you well, man. Hit me up anytime. DM me, alright? Alright? You listening? Listen to me. Listen to me. When it's around you, you have to make it positive in your head. I know it feels like it's forever and it's gonna take forever. When you're 14, four more years sounds like forever, but you have no choice. You either bounce or you stay. And if you stay, which is more likely, which is fine, you gotta put 
positivity in your ears. Do you understand? I promise you. You have no other alternatives. Otherwise you just dwell and you go down a spiral that you don't want to go down. Do you understand? Rule number six, live your passion. By the way, this whole notion of like you can do anything and all this stuff, let me just tell you, it's stupid hard. Reality is, most of you are just averagely talented. Right? Like, you're not gonna index in anything too crazy. Here's the good news. This is not about how much money you make or how talented you are. This is about being happy. Everybody here, regardless of how talented they are in making money or art or what have you, has shit that they're super into. You love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Your whole life could be about Michelangelo. <laughs> it could. And here's what really f***s with me. In this internet age, you could have a podcast around Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You could buy Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle memorabilia on Craigslist and Facebook and Etsy and then flip it on a different platform because you're so knowledgeable because that's the pizza eating Leonardo. <laughs> that I'm just fascinated about what you, happens when you go all in on your passion, you're committed to it and you use the infrastructure of this you living your life for 80 years as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle expert, and this is getting funnier to me by the second, <laughs> making 83K a year in ads on your podcast, the flip, some miraculous reason somebody paid you $2,000 to go to a Bush League Comic Con thing. <laughs> that person making 62,000 a year being the TMT expert versus them making 77,000 a year being an admin in a company where they hate their life nine to five, that delta is something I will go to the grave on because it is what I want to articulate to everybody, the, the unbelievable level of practicality to do shit around stuff you like and here's the big part. How many people under 40? Let me just start with this group. If you just really took what I'm talking about, became an expert at Facebook and Instagram, really understood, the fact that you could take a leap for two years, move back in home, move in together, cut your expenses, I don't give a shit. The fact that you can do that for two or three years and if it doesn't work out, you can go back to getting a job, that's nuts. That's nuts. Rule number seven, reinvest in your business. Are you a consultant, coach, or service provider struggling to get clients? Business. I don't think you get to judge what somebody does with the fruits of their labor. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think that that's what's amazing about anything, which is there's many different, uh, many different uh, definitions. For you, uh, you know, go out, work your face off, win, and reward yourself with something is exactly right. For me, the reward is pouring more of the dollars and energy into the company, not buying stuff for myself. It's one and the same. Yeah. It's one and the same. To me, I, I think it's amazing if somebody wants to buy an Armani suit or a $5,000 pair of a belt or a diamond ring for 100000 I don't, but that doesn't mean that's right or wrong. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing with that same 100,000 instead of a ring is I'm hiring two more people because I'm trying to buy the jewelry company, not a piece of the jewelry. Rule number eight, don't care about the judgments of others. The biggest vulnerability everybody has here is they're worried about somebody else's judgment. The reason there's no moment of clarity is you don't wanna jump. You don't wanna jump because you're worried if you lose what people are gonna say starting with your parents, your friends, your contemporaries. My ability to not truly, truly care about other people's opinions has been the foundation of my happiness. I respect people's opinions. I just, I just don't care about their judgment of me. I have flip-flopped about project management at VaynerMedia like so many times and I don't worry if somebody here is like, make a decision or like, you're stupid or like, what the f or why are we always changing? Like, go work at gray advertising. Rule number nine, have selfless goals. The reason I will never achieve my goals is my goals are to play. The reason people achieve their goals is because their goals was a number of money. If your goal is an amount of money, you've lost. 
So the reason it's empty is what? You wanted to be a millionaire, so what happens next? You're gonna make 10 million a year? Like, what, 100 million? Like, it's the wrong goals. My biggest goals is to be the most impactful entrepreneur of this generation by bringing the most value to all the entrepreneurs. That's gonna take me my whole life. Thank you. So you need to change your goal from something that's selfish to something that's selfless because then it will take you the rest of your life. And rule number 10, the last homie for a very special bonus clip is live life without regrets. I should really go to a retirement home one day and volunteer and just talk to them. It will make you want to do shit every minute of your life because when you're 90 and you're not mobile and you're tired and it's over, you can't do it. You can't do it. You can't build that company you wanted. You can't spend that time with your kid. It's regret. And it drives the shit. Out of me. How old are you? I'm 27. You got time. It's a it's a balance of regret and patience. Like you can go hard on for three years, do nothing right, wake up, and be young as. F- the amount of people who are watching this right now, maybe even in this room, that are sad, men and women, that they didn't go for it and didn't make the move and didn't try, that regret is a hell of a lot longer and more painful and more drawn out than the instant rejection of going for it. It's just the way it is. Like, even if you think of random dumb stuff, like not asking out that person in high school or stuff, this stuff lingers. It's the stuff that you don't do that bothers you. And so for the purebred entrepreneurs in here that haven't decided to make that leap or take that at bat, I implore you to do so right away because this window closes too. Now I've got a really special bonus clip from Gary Vee on how to hold yourself accountable that I think you're gonna really enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point land. Not having a lot of followers, not being a successful CEO. Happiness, and happiness never happens when you're fronting, when it's fake. So my friends, listen, be patient. One of the biggest reasons so many people are upset is they don't even realize they're in a fake environment. They don't realize that they haven't developed the grind or the hustle or the patience because things have been subsidized for whatever reason. It could be a million different things, but often parents uh, pan <laughs> or I'll give you another fake environment. Just living in a half glass empty world. Before you started, you lost because you decided you can't win or the government's f***ed up or the game is rigged or it's not for you. Somebody put into your head that you can't win, that it's not fair, that there's no shot. Another fake environment. You own your s***. You can do this. But the reality is you have to get real serious about a couple of things, which is really putting yourself when you realize you're fundamentally 100% in control. You get real happy when you realize you're in control. Accountability, my friends. Accountability trumps entitlement in the game of happiness, which leads to 100% success on your terms. Raise your standard. Fire, man. So many takeaways. Uh, that, that video was great. Gary V actually has a lot on his top 10. You want to start first? Sure. What's up, you guys? Good morning. Um, So some of my very, very favorite ones, I love when he was talking to the 14-year-old and he was telling him to surround himself with positivity. And I think, uh, like, that's so crucial, like, in life, and especially when you're trying to build a business. I think majority of the people on the call are distributors. And so I think that's super crucial, especially when you are building your business, because if you don't surround yourself by people who support you, who encourage you or are telling you to go for it, like more than likely, you're not going to chase your goals and your dreams. And then you're going to end up with what he said is living a life of regret. You know, it's so easy to like listen to other people who don't have many goals and dreams and especially when we're not surrounded by the, the ones that like are speaking like life into us. So I think that's one of the most important parts of like, of everything is surrounding yourself with people who see what you see, who are going where you want to go. And ultimately who are pushing you and like pulling you all at the same time. So I really love that. And I love um, how he talked about don't care about other people's judgments. And I think this is so important, especially like while you're maybe on your weight loss journey or again, you're, you're doing business is not to care what other people say. 
And most of, like one of the things like I was talking to one of a one of our team members and she was telling me how this girl responded to her in a certain way. And I said, listen, it's nothing against you. Had it been another person, she would respond it the same way. So don't take it personal. People are the way that they are, not because it's you who they want to attack, but that's just who they are 99.9% .9 of the time. So you can't let other people's opinions and judgments phase you because if you do, again, you'll end up on the road of regret. And like he said, like you don't want to be 80, 90 years old and be consumed by the things that you didn't do. Like, just think about the things that you didn't do. Like he said, like asking somebody out in high school or doing this or doing that. And it's those things that we don't do that haunt us and that stay with us and they linger. So it's like, we're going to go anyway. Why not give life our best shot? Love it. Great stuff. Why not go and give it your best shot? So a couple of my biggest takeaways were uh, I really loved, you know, success takes time, you know, and really balancing hunger and patience. So those are some big things that really resonated with me because I remember I heard, I think it was Bishop T.D. Jakes or somebody talked about, you know, this is a, you know, an, an example, but it makes a lot of sense. You can't rush the, the process to create a baby. You know, a man can't get nine women pregnant and expect it to happen in one month. It still takes nine, it, technically 10 months, it's 40 weeks, right? There's a, what's called gestation period. There's a time for creation, right? And I think because of uh, social media and by the time we see a lot of success stories, they've been gestating, been in creation mode for a time that they're not new, but we see them as new because we're just now hearing about them. And I really love that because he's telling people, hey, you got time. You guys, the average life expectancy is above 70, right? If you're living healthy with these products and living a healthy lifestyle, you know, I'm going to say you could probably even live to be a little bit more than that on average. Expect that if you're taking care of your body and living healthy, right? So you might be in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s. You still got 30 years, right? So having that longer term vision, but then balancing that with that you don't all have all day to grow your business or to your goals or whatever it is. So having that hunger and that balance. And really what I like to look at it as is, be patient in the, in the long-term goals, the bigger vision, but be hungry in the today goals, right? Roxy and I started our 90-day plan coming out of our uh, leadership development weekend, which was at the end of October. And we said, hey, every single day we're going to finish these days. We're on day, I think, 14 or 15 today. And we are patient in the creation of the 90 day results that we want we wanted a certain amount of new business new clients new team members new leaders but we're we're patient in that we know that's not going to happen in day one day seven right but we're hungry on today's action plan like we're obsessed with these points need to get done today i don't have patience in the today a lot of people get that flip they have patience in the today meaning Oh, I didn't get that point done and that point done. I can wait until tomorrow. That's patience in the today. But then they're impatient in the longer term. I don't have it yet. I don't have the bigger thing yet. Why not? That's a flip. The people who we've seen get the most success are impatient in the today actions. I have to complete these by tonight. You guys, it was Sunday night last night. It was late. And I still had work to do on my 90-day plan on a Sunday, right? Most people would say, it's Sunday, it's my day off, it's time to relax. But I said, no, every single one of these days in the next 90 days, these points are going to be completed. It does not matter how late I have to stay up to complete them. That's impatience in the today. But then being patient with the results of the 90 day. Results of the, for us, it's our life career, right? We've been hitting it for five and a half years. Next month is gonna be our sixth year anniversary, right? There's been people that have come after us and gone further than us. And there's people that came before us that have gone shorter than us. But it's not about that comparison. It's about knowing where we're committed to going, but knowing that it's really gonna be a path. It's a, it's a path and a journey. It's like a season, right? My goal personally for me is to have a 70 season life, right? Hopefully live to 90, 100 and be helping people that whole way. Every single season. It's not like an athlete where it's a certain amount of seasons and you're out. We have uh, our upline inside of Herbalife Founder Circle, Leslie Stanford. She just did an LDW last month, right, in October. 
still out there helping people, right? She's been with the company as a distributor over 30 years. That's inspiring to me, right? She's still having her seasons, helping, making a difference, right? So I was big, and then the last one was accountability creates happiness. He said, be accountable to yourself. And this is really the, the inner conversation where you really get to say what you're committed to, to yourself. And then from that, you get to decide what kind of person are you? Are you the kind of person that keeps their promises and agreements to themselves? Your promises and agreements to other people mean nothing if you don't keep your promises and agreements to yourself. And I speak from a place of there was a time in my life where I couldn't trust myself, right? There was, I would say I wanted one thing and I wouldn't do it. Or I say I was going to not do this and I did it. And I would be so mad at myself. I would be like, how can you not even control yourself? How do you expect to control your life and you said you weren't going to do this and you did it? Or you said you were going to do this and you did it. That was a really tough time for me because I felt like I, I lost trust in myself. And from there, I said, okay, you know that in these certain situations, in these certain experiences, at these certain times, you make decisions that you said you wouldn't. Now what do you have to do? You got to plan better, right? This is when personally for me, like if it's a health goal, I stopped getting the, the junk food in the house, period. Because for me, I have a thing with candy bars. Thank God for the lemon bites from Herbalife, right? Having two is a struggle for me because I want the third. It's like I had to mentally tell myself, Aubrey, you cannot have three to four of these things. They're meant serving sizes too, right? Chill. That's a struggle for me sometimes because my, they start tasting so good that I want that feeling to continue. That's why I would have a problem with chips. I would eat a whole bag of chips. I couldn't stop. So I had to, my thing was no chips. Unless it's your treat meal, don't even have them in the house, right? Because for me, the temptation would be too much. That was my form of accountability. Not even put myself in front of temptation if I knew that my will would get weak in those, in those situations, right? That was my accountability, but that took some pre-work. And that took even accountability to the pre-work, not having them in the house, not being around them, right? So those are little things that for me really stuck out. Accountability creates happiness, because guess what? After I didn't make the decision that I said I wasn't gonna make, I felt great. I was like, yes! oh man, this is awesome, right? It created the happiness from the discipline. So those are some of mine. Let's get a few takeaways. Man, I'm seeing people focused and fired up. Uh, Kyla, I saw you with your big cup of tea, right? Really getting fired up. Give us a takeaway. What was one of your takeaways? Hang on, you're on mute. You're, uh, we can't hear you. It's not on mute, but I don't know. Maybe you try to unmute. Let me see if I unmute you. Can you hear us? It still says you're on mute. I think you should be good now. Yeah, we can hear you now. Go ahead. Yeah. No. Nah, it's still breaking up. There we go. What about now? You're good, okay. you're good. Okay, so I love Gary Vee. He's one of my absolute favorites. Uh, so this was super awesome. I'm super fired up. Uh, I love buy the company, not the product. Like, I want to go to the top, like, and I know that requires a lot of patience, but, like, it's just about, like, willing to be put, like, put in that time and have the patience to just buy the company um it you so just that and like not what you or what they think like plenty of people have plenty of things to say about like herbal life and multi-level marketing and whatever whatever and you just have to like not even listen to that stuff and go um and then if your goal is an amount of money you're you've lost like you can't go through just thinking about the money because if you're just focusing on yourself and not helping other people, you're not going to be able to buy the company ever because you're just not going to make it. So that's it. I have a ton of takeaways, but thank you for letting me share those. Love it. Great takeaways. I love it. And uh, I love that takeaway. Yeah. He said, yo, I'm trying to buy the jewelry company, not the ring. That was fire. Uh, next, let's get, let me see who we got on focus. A lot of people on focus. 
Uh, Marv seems to be helping a client. Susie looks like she's at work. Marv, you got a takeaway? Give us a takeaway. Give us a nugget. What's up? What's up, y'all? Great morning. Happy Monday, man. Uh, just here at the Nutrition Club. I love Gary V too. Gary V is one of my like ultimate, ultimate guys that I listen to besides uh, Jim Rohn and Mark Hughes, of course. Gary V is like, I listen to all his podcasts. I actually, uh, during the 90 day challenge, well, 90 day commitment, I've been listening to his jab, jab, right hook. So um, one of his things that he, uh, that he said was like, live life with no regrets, right? Just know that every day you're waking up uh, to do what you want to do. Whatever you have, like people's, uh, people are going to have like, you know, opinions. People are going to have like, different uh, ways of seeing what you do and what you do might be crazy to them but if what you're committed to do is going to make you happy and fulfilled live life with no regrets right and then another good one was like you know uh don't care what people say right like don't don't care what anyone says because at the end of the day you're building your dreams you're, you know they're the ones going into a nine to five they're the ones that, that you know don't have the lifestyle that you want or that you're building too, you know, for us, it's like live, being at the nutrition club right now, also growing our, our social media business, but like, you know, living the life that we want, you know, this is opportunity over obligation. We came here as an opportunity, not forced by anybody to come here. Right. So this is what like, I love about it. Um, yeah. Let's have a great Monday. Y'all it's the first Monday of the month and I'm turning 30 this month. Let's get it. Let's get it. Turning 30 on Herbalife looking like he's 20. Maybe 23, right? When he grows the beard out, when he cuts it, maybe 20. So fired up, you guys. Opportunity over obligation. And remember, I love the way you talked about, like, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Like, if you were chasing your passion and made, you know, 60000 would it be worth more to you than working at a job you weren't passionate about making 70000 I thought that was really, really powerful because your, your time you don't get back. Your most valuable thing you have is what you invest your life in, right? And I don't know about you, but when you talked about regrets, I would regret it personally if I invested my life in a job I wasn't passionate about just to make enough money to pay the bills to get the things that I thought I deserved because I worked so hard at the job I wasn't passionate about, right? That was one of the reasons why Roxy and I personally took on the opportunity as Herbalife Distributors because we said, what if one day, you know, we could live the way we want to live, but it'd be something we're passionate about and be something that we are our own bosses, right? It's kind of like Marvin. Nobody told Marvin and Kyrie to go open up their own nutrition club. They chose it. They create their day. They create their actions. They stay accountable to themselves. That's what's so beautiful about this thing. Same thing with us. And that's personally what I always wanted. The first time I had a boss come and talk to me about, you. let's see what you're doing on this. And you know you're doing this. And you have your phone out too much. That was like, I knew it. Hey, I'm not going to be here too long. I don't like people telling me what to do. I like me telling me what to do. Now, it's different from having a mentor. A mentor is someone you seek out, right, to get the input. I wasn't seeking my job, my boss as a mentor. So, uh, awesome things, amazing, you guys. I'm gonna take everybody off mute. Let's have a great first Monday. Monday Time to get it, baby. That new house blend coffee is out. Let's go. Peace out, y'all.